like to welcome to the stage people from Thunderbirds. Here we go. We've got, uh, give them a big warm hand here because I'm going to list them all in no particular order. David Graham. There you go. And Mr. Matt Zimmerman. <laughs> <laughs> Understated as ever. <laughs> Shane Rimmer. <laughs> Judith Shutt. Can join us at the other end. And David Elliott. Do you want to come up here? Oh, you're going to sit down there. You're going to sit. Mary Turner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there we go. There you go, in that chair. Hi, come and sit down, Mary Taylor. <laughs> Who are you getting into trouble? That, that's all right. We saw the puppets earlier. We're, we're talking to you today, this time. Um, OK, so, well, I don't know how we're going to work this. I'm sure everyone's got loads of questions. We'll come to in a minute. Um, did you, at the time, did any of you sit down with family and friends and watch the episodes? Can you remember the sort of uh, feedback that you got at that time when it was first on air? We've got a microphone, but let's start with uh, David. Da David first. I, I do oh. know that once it took Hang on, off... Matt, I said David first. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You can't, well, stop him. you can't stop him. He looked I'm like he was looking at me. Can't stop him. <laughs> you looked like uh, you were looking no, at me. No, no, I looked at all I... of you at the same time. I'm, well, I'm so hey. starstruck. Okay. Yes, I did. Yeah. I did watch it quite a bit with, with family and friends, but you, you, we didn't realise at the time how big it was going to be. But of course, the Thunderbirds was a climax of all the previous series, yes. and there, there was a groundswell for Jerry's work, which sort of built up. And, and Thunderbirds was really a, you know, <coughs> a possibly the icing on the cake, mm. which I was very proud and lucky to be part of. Well, we have diehard die hard fans here for all the different shows. I'm yeah, sure right. there's a big contingent for Space 1999, but I know that there's a, probably Thunderbirds is the biggest one yeah, as right. far as the fan base is concerned. Um, Shane, did you watch uh, it with family and friends? Uh, no, I was an outcast. Were you? I <laughs> Had no family, no yes. friends. No. <laughs> I used to, uh, the, the dialogue was something that escaped me at times. I mean, I, I was usually uh, involved in repartee with the man on my left. <laughs> and I missed a few. I, uh, how do I put this? <laughs> Can I? No, just a minute. I, uh, w it was an amazing event simply because I think for most of us, first, it was just getting together and yeah. the kind of a crew up in space. Uh, Jerry had a marvelous sort of concept of this because usually when you go into a multi-voiced uh, recording, you're in separate parts of the recording studio. He wouldn't have it. It was one large central mic. And because he said, God, you're way up in space. You're not, you're not out on different arms of this thing. Uh, be together. Well, being together sometimes got you a couple of bruises in the head because when you had to get into the, uh, into the microphone field, uh, you had to get there in any way it was possible to get there. <laughs> you know? So we had a lot of scrimmages going on in that thing. I don't know whether you heard any. Uh, but you had to get to your place of, of uh, doing the lines uh, and still maintain a kind of a balance in where the, where the voices were coming from. So, you know, we got our daily, we got a weekly workout with that thing. Mm. Getting up off the floor was a, a bit of a bruiser sometimes, <laughs> wasn't it? But you, you never shared these experiences with family and friends when you got back home? Oh, yes. You yeah. did. They so didn't just what the question is, is whether you actually watched the episodes back then. In the living room. <laughs> <laughs> whether you did. Yes, you did. Okay. Yeah. Matt. No, I never watched them. <laughs> Not at all. Well, I know I didn't at all. I mean, because well, I was doing other stuff and work. I only started to watch them, and suddenly it took off, and fans were coming up and saying, what was your favorite episode? And I would go, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I finally got copies, and I watched them, so I would learn some of them. 
And yeah. now I know it is a like, move when you're dead, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm quick like you, that. Ah, you know the Just episode titles. Class, you know. That's impressive. But, uh, I, See, I, they're I, all I, experts out there. Um, are they? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh, so therefore, no, I never watched them at the beginning. I mean, it was still a job. It wasn't until the, the, it, the, the, the 32 episodes came out and suddenly, I, like uh, you were both as well, of getting phone calls from magazines and newspapers. They wanted your picture, they wanted your story, mm. because you were doing a voice. Mm. And you were going, what, what, are they crazy, you know? But uh, are you late? <laughs> he's, the, he's the official photographer. <laughs> oh, well then you're very late. He's trying to not get on camera. He's, no, it's all right. <laughs> but, uh, so therefore, you know, you never bothered with it at all until suddenly, you know, when people start asking about it, you have to find out about it. That's all yeah. it was, you know. Yeah. That's it. Okay. That's it? That's it. I can <laughs> okay. Mary, did you watch it with family and friends? I don't remember doing so. I don't think yeah. I <laughs> no, you microphone. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember doing so at the time. No. I was just busy working. And That's yeah. right. Did you, did you get so the, you the when the videotapes came out many years later, did you get them then? Were you curious um, to see it all those years later? Well, I had seen the episodes uh, before that. Uh, um, I can't remember how or when, but... Uh, Conventions uh, and things. Um, I didn't go to any conventions. Did you not? In the early no. days, I think the first one was eighty-one, so it was a while. No, you took trouble. Is this, is this is the first one I've been to? Is it? Yes. I saw you at the concert. That's where I saw you. The concert. That was a, the Barry Gray concert a few years ago. Oh yes. That was yes. very good. The rub yeah. organised. Yes. David down there. Did Wake you up, did you ever watch the stuff back? <coughs> no, David Elliott on the floor down there. <coughs> Did you ever watch it back at home with My family time. and friends? No, um, because it, it wasn't on when I was at home. Right. Um, and uh, my son actually bought uh, the set of Thunderbirds on DVD, but I haven't even watched those. Um, <laughs> but I will do one day, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> my Don't man. Don't leave it too late, Dave. I'm sorry? Don't leave it too late. <laughs> do, do you know something I don't know? <laughs> 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 Judith, you got your microphone there. Yeah, what, what was it like? Did you, did you sort of get feedback at the time from well, people that saw? No, I, d I don't remember anything about. Nothing know, at I all. I don't remember watching it, and I don't remember having feedback. Or was there not a sense of uh, pride knowing that when you saw kids with the outfits or the yeah, toys, but, you, I don't but knowing that I you don't were involved? Think they had any outfits in those. Days. Oh, there were. <laughs> I bet some of them still got them. What is this? <laughs> Kids don't seem uh, to dress up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember the little Thunderbird hat. And I, uh, I had one. <laughs> <laughs> I made one for my uncle when he had his Stan Astaire lift put in. He wasn't. He, <laughs> was, he, he, he Yeah. He, he gave me that kind of look. <laughs> no, I had to do something for Sylvia at one point when she launched a book. It's her book. Yeah. And she actually had a costume made for me as Alan. Really? I had to wear it. Oh God. <laughs> It's still in therapy. The things you do for love. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I thought I'm you were taller. <laughs> 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 he was yesterday. That's right. Um, I mean, this went huge. It went to, obviously, to there was a feature film eventually. And it went around the world. I've got something here I picked up a little while ago. Which, uh, look world. at this. I think, language. if I'm right, I think this was Argentinian. Look at that. Anyone see one of those? Look at that. Woo! Yes, I'm open to offers if anyone wants to come and see me afterwards. So but, that's um, why they attacked the Falklands. That's, why, that's, that's how popular it got. It went all yeah, around the world. Torbellino, the Aventura, yeah, it goes, it's so, oh, yeah. Nice. Yes, exciting. Yeah, very, very good. Exciting. There we go. There we go. But it was, it was huge, absolutely huge. And um, did, also it went on to have like the mime show. Did any of you go and see that when they... And the guys yes, did a I mime did. show. Yeah, David, you saw it, did yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. I went with Jerry once. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Good fun. You saw yeah. it as well. Yeah. Mm. That, were, were you impressed or were you a little bit sort of no, rather hurt that they were taking the mickey out of your puppetry? <laughs> no, it was very good. <laughs> it, was, it was very clever. And I'm sure, how many people saw the Mime Theatre Project? Yeah, quite a lot, I thought so. And uh, no, that was, that was another example of how it was so popular. Um, we're going to throw it open to the audience because there's lots of you and I'm sure loads of people want to ask questions. So I'm looking around seeing who's going to be... Oh, well done. First one, hand up. Don't be bashful now. You know, I know you've got questions you want to ask. We've got to borrow one of the microphones. So, there you go. You can always lean into me and use mine. <laughs> 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 
Look at him, incorrigible. <laughs> Leave us alone. Hello, yes, you're quite right. The question is for you, because I've asked it before, and it's such a brilliant answer, and I know people are going to want to hear it. But in, uh, and the, the other two can join in if they wish. But in your opinion, what would your characters be doing 20, 30 years down the line? I didn't understand the word you said. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what is Alan up to now? What Alan is up to now? And the others. You know, well, John oh becomes God. a monk, etc. Parker's up to no good. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, uh, well, Alan and Tintin got married and they had four children. Uh, they were called Jeff, Scott, <laughs> Virgil, and of course, Alan. Uh, it, well, unfortunately, when, uh, when uh, Jeff passed away, uh, Scott had to take over an awful lot of Jeff's duties. And so, uh, 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 Scott, uh, Alan also started using Thunderbird 1 as well as uh, Thunderbird Did 3. Yes, yes, that. yes, I know. <laughs> well, I'm telling you now. Because unfortunately, uh, uh, Scott ended up in a wheelchair. <laughs> so he couldn't use, he couldn't fly the ship anymore. Uh, we had trouble with John, because John ended up in an asylum, because <laughs> he spent so much time up in that thing, he didn't know where he was half the time. Um, the only person we had problem who ran away and disappeared was Gordon. Gordon. Uh, he finally ended up in some other island with some sort of mermaid-looking woman that I didn't understand at all, you know. And other than that, uh, Virgil ended up being a concert pianist and having a good, very good career touring the world as a concert pianist. Is that enough? That'll do. Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, actually, he Parker can't stand now, when the attention is off. <laughs> will you shut up for one moment? <laughs> <laughs> but Parker, Parker lives on, doesn't he, David? Well, he, yeah. he drives a car for Addison Lee at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> because he picked me up the other day right. and took me home. And you're very <laughs> light. <laughs> David, Parker will be living again, won't he? Oh, yes. Yes, he's, tell he's, us he's, whatever you can. He's going to be <coughs> reborn next year. Okay. Um, Have yes. you done any recordings yet? Yes, I've done quite a few. Oh, okay. Yes, there's 26. Oh, there, okay. And they're going to come out next spring uh -huh. on computer graphics. Have the they shown you any clips yet? No, they haven't shown me any clips. They've shown me some picture stills of the characters, yes. which look very, very good. Um, Parker looks as handsome as ever. Good. Yeah, yeah. Based on me, of course. Uh, and um, there's 26 episodes going out on ITV and they're being <coughs> made in New Zealand. They have shown us films of building the sets, mm -hmm. which are extremely elaborate and uh, the best that money can buy. Yeah. So, I mean, the format of the show is exactly the same. I've heard that they've got CGI characters, but they've actually done model aircraft. Is that right? Well, I'm not absolutely certain ah, because okay. I, don't, I don't know quite. We'll have to wait and I've see. Right? Yeah. But I think it's going to be very, very classy. Yeah. I'm Apart curious from about, me, that there's is. one question I've got to ask though, is I heard that K. Van Novak is doing the voice of Brains. If they got you in to do Parker, yeah. why is somebody else doing Brains? You'll have to ask the <laughs> producers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't uh, have to double up anymore. Yeah, you? that's kind but of, well, but, that, but there we are. But I heard he was going to do him as sort of Asian Indian. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Oh. Curious. Really? They're re obviously, done something different with it, but there you go. Okay, another question. Very quick, down there, very good. On. Hang on, wait for the mic. Uh, just following on with that, David. Yes. Uh, are the new shows, um, you won't say characters, um, the Why isn't the mic working? Yeah, the mic's not working, the camera won't pick it up. Can we do that one again? Should we take... It's Judith has another it's mic. It's have you turned it off? <laughs> I could just hear, not very well. Liam. Though. Judith has another one. Try that one. I think we're good. I think the audience is terrible. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, David, um, you, you've all said how the original series, you did like a radio series, all doing the, um, the, the, the voices first. In the new series, is this being done the same way or yes, is it being done differently? Yeah. It's being done the same way in a studio in Soho Square. Mm. Um, I don't see a lot of the other characters because most of my stuff is with Rosamund Pike, 
who is now playing Lady Penelope. But it's being done, you know, the, f the first series we did as a, a group, as a play, and I think that paid off because, you know, we just did it as a drama. But mm. this is being done in, in sections, really, which they all fit together, send out to New Zealand and, and dub it on to the finished film. And Shane, there was a, oh. a camaraderie yeah. doing it that way, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. Just all, everyone grouped together to, for the recording. It worked. You say about fighting for the microphone space, but really yeah. it was... Yeah. I'm doing an episode with him. Are you? Yes. This is news. Yes. Who are you playing? I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing an archaeologist and they dug him up from somewhere. <laughs> I'll get you with that, David. <laughs> Any more I questions over no. there? Can, can, oh. can I just add something? Oh. A, friend of a, sub yes. oh. a, a friend of mine's just been to We To Workshop and she saw them building one of the models for City. Oh. And she said, like with the original series, they are using all sorts of bits of things. She said they were using like skateboard wheels and things to make things. So they are obviously using real models. So that's, that's a bit that's of information good. for you. Uh, you would expect that from Weta, wouldn't you? That's good. Say okay. hello to Ned for me. Somebody over there had their hand up, I saw. There you go, down there. Hi there. Uh, question Would you like for to stand up? They want to see you. Why should he? <laughs> Do you want to stand up? Don't be bashful. We're all friends ah, here. Good. Okay, <laughs> now we can see you. Hi. Uh, uh, qu question for all the panel. Um, is there a particular uh, memorable or favourite line that or scene to film? Uh, a, a, a line or a scene? A favourite memorable yeah. line or scene? Well, this is a chance for them to do some of the voices, isn't it? <laughs> you guy, voice guys. Are there any favourite lines or scenes that you can remember, or well, can I you do a bit of bit of your characters? We'd like to hear. Well, a I remember bit. one when I was. Um, I think Parker had a an oppo called Light Fingered Fred, and I was playing both parts. Actually. Ah, that was fun. <laughs> yes, um, and that, I don't know. They were sort of ro they were sort of reform robbers, and they were uh, trying to rob a bank. And um, I remember that very well. It's hard to remember something one did 50 years ago in terms of script, mm. but it was a lovely episode because there was a lot of comedy in it. Mm. And that was a, gr a great thing about the, the series as a whole. There was lots of comic, e comic episodes and elements in the series. And I think that's what made it, apart it from the it adventure. Warmer, it? Yeah, it makes it warmer, apart from all the fantastic special effects. Okay, but can we have a little bit of Parker, please? Do. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to hear? Uh, well, there we are. I think Parker, was Parker very fond of Lady Penelope? Well, they were travelling the car once, and he reached back to adjust a safety belt, you know, and their strings touched. <laughs> <laughs> it was a moment of mad erotic tension. <laughs> And uh, Lady Penelope said, watch it, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> so so, I, <laughs> so I, I was hands off <laughs> ever Quite after. Right, yes, yeah, very proper. Ever after, I should say. <laughs> Shane, you said I, that you didn't understand some of the scripts, but, but Scott was very much in charge. You didn't understand any of them. didn't understand any of it. I was just learning to read at that time, so I was yeah. having a problem. <laughs> about that problem. Oh, that was it. Yeah, well, it was sort of quirky. <laughs> anyway, the, the, uh, what I couldn't remember, and this is crazy, I mean, I've been with this group for how many years, and I kept on getting the names confused. I mean, I had us getting into the most ridiculous disasters. You mean like uh, your own name? Yeah, that was, that was <laughs> the best one. It's the only one. And, you know, and uh, so I had to go before the uh, session started and memorized these names so I didn't get the, the right person doing the wrong thing. I drove, I drove the editors mad, they didn't know what. <laughs> and so it, that, that was about it. I mean, it, there, was, there was so much going on and you had uh, uh, to keep a clear head, which I was never very much. <laughs> you were brilliant at keeping a clear yeah. head. I was, I was brilliant. brilliant. I got lost a lot of times. How the hell we got, 
How we, we got found you. We found you eventually. Yes, I know. Did you? <laughs> yes. Did. I'm still looking. You know that. Yeah, yeah. I think your voice is very distinctive. Right? If you were, uh, you know, barking a, a commander, a PA voice on Bond films or anything, I could spot you immediately. If you've done extra looping or something later. Yeah, I got my lines right by then. <laughs> He's been looped a lot lately. Thanks, <laughs> Matt. All I remember is David saying, shut up, Matt. That's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> not enough, not enough. <laughs> see, see that? Um, dear Peter, uh, all I can, uh, the thing that I get asked for Alan all the time is, F-A-B, father. I, <laughs> <laughs> I used to say that for some reason, an awful all lot of All of a sudden, of you're 21 again. I can't <laughs> go up that high as I used to be. <clears throat> F-A-B, father. F or, or He's still there. Thunderbird still 3, there. Uh, Thunderbird 3 uh, calling uh, Scott, come in, you know, that thing. <laughs> or Very stay good. out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> ah. Judith down there. We're uh, leaving you out. Do you remember any lines at all that you had? <laughs> no. You she was too busy. <laughs> Just doing the work. You were doing the work, yes, in that little room at the back. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I know. Wonderful, Judith. that room. We talked a little bit earlier about it, but what was it? What was it like on uh, on Thunderbirds? Because all of a sudden there was a much bigger crew, wasn't there? A bigger family. Hundreds. Um, yeah, only uh, only a couple more puppeteers, though. Really? Yeah. It was, mm -hmm. it was mainly the model effects crew that expanded, yeah. was it? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that being like that, Mary? Oh, we haven't got a microphone for you. Sorry. <laughs> 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 uh, <sorry. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember the, the the crew expanded? There were a lot more model makers. But was it essentially the same amount yeah. of model make, uh, puppeteers? Well, there were a few more uh, puppeteers, mainly makers of puppets, I think. Right. Because there were more characters were, were brought into the episodes as it went along. There you go. Okay. What are you doing well, after this? <laughs> <laughs> Running, I think. <laughs> The thing that uh, I think impressed everybody, I remember the first time I went back into that little room in Slough where you did all your work with the puppets and everything. I got, and they were doing, a, they had like a dining room table size and everything was happening on that little dining room table. Mm -hmm. It was just unbelievable. You people were just, and then when we saw it on the screen, it was amazing. Yeah. And you people were doing that. I think that was absolutely wonderful. Yeah, well done. You yeah, know, yeah. absolutely yeah. wonderful. They never allowed me enough to come in and see you, though. <laughs> they kept me away from you. <laughs> oh, Mary. That and the court order. Um, <laughs> any more questions? <coughs> Over there. <coughs> Got the microphone. There we go. Kind of a question for both cast and production. There were sometimes in episodes where a character the voice actor would suddenly change. There was an occasion in The Vault of Death where Shane Rimmer was doing a very good British voice, and yeah. suddenly... Was he? It, it, it was very good, yes. What are you accusing me of? I, I, <laughs> acting, well, acting. Oh, acting. <laughs> <laughs> there was it no was, acting going on. It was on. so good, he recognised you. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly it would change from Shane Rimmer to being David Graham. Is, was that possibly um, a mistake during the recording of the voices, or was that possibly a limited amount of puppets being used during the filming? Oh, that's Have a I tricky asked one. Too a trickier question. A tricky one. I mean, I used to. Well, I mean, Ray Barrett and I. Obviously, other people did. We shared a lot of the visiting characters, so I often found I was talking to myself. You know. <laughs> It's, Even it's, like, it's like the joke <laughs> in, in a stage play when a, a character asks another character and he says, what do you do? He says, well, I'm God. He says, how do you know you're God? Well, he says, when I pray, I find I'm talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. It was probably down to sort of late dubbing or something, or maybe they recorded separate characters and then merged it because they only had one puppet, who knows? I, what, what, I think a lot of your answer is probably lost in the... What did he actually time. mean? I really <laughs> didn't understand what you meant. Well, I think there was one secondary character that got voiced at different times by different voice artists. What? Who, who did that? Well, I don't know whose fault it was, but... 
Don't look at me, I wasn't there. I was at home. I mean, you mean it's a bit like when David Holliday left the series, the, the voice was taken over by Jeremy Wilkin, is that what you mean? Uh, that did happen, that was later, yeah. And I think this is, there we are. Um, no, I mean in the Pacific episodes, just where one character would have two voice actors. I'm merely asking, do you know any reasons why that would have occurred, or...? Well, sometimes we played well, three or four characters, different characters in the scene, actually. I don't actually. think one character, would, if one character would have two voice actors doing the same character. They were always separated out. Yeah, that sounds like a mistake at the editing well, stage. Really so really have we got anyone it. here that knows anything about the editing on Thunderbird? We didn't make any mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> He, David, do you know what he's talking well, about? I can't, I, I can't remember it, but as I directed it, I feel a bit ashamed. I don't <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, you've, I mean, made, had, you've made him blush now. Yeah. We had episodes, a couple of episodes where David was talking to himself, but they tried very much to not to let that happen. Mm. I mean, because otherwise you get very confused about who the hell am I, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know and especially you. But no. Yeah, so, <laughs> so basically, uh, no, we did, you know. Well, we did use to, we had to double up. That's all there was to it, you know. Did any of you guys get to go to the opening of the movie? Say no. what? There was a big sort of, you know, glossy, glamorous evening opening. No, I was working. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. I was working. No, I didn't. But, no. yeah. Did you go? Yes. Oh, what's it? They had the band oh, playing at the, the beginning yeah. or something. You mean the Thunderbird? The Thunderbird movie. movie. Yeah. That's I went there. They you had did. The band of the Royal Marines there. Yeah, this is what, that's what Mary yeah. was saying earlier. Yeah, yeah. that was very impressive. London Pavilion. Yes, as it right. then was. It was a cinema. Yeah. Yeah, and it was quite a glossy affair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wore a tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> or I should say a tuxedo. <laughs> I heard that Parker was serving the drinks. Well, maybe that's no, just us. No, anyway. yeah. like <laughs> Any more out a there? Lot of we got? There's somebody over in the middle there. Can you get there, Liam? Hello. Um, obviously, you've all played your characters really well. Was there anything that you specifically want? <laughs> Hello. Um, was there anything you specifically during this series wanted to see your character do, such as I don't know, Shane, you want to see Scott up in Thunderbird Five, or Alan maybe at the control at Thunderbird Two? Was there anything that you would have loved to have seen your characters do? Were you that invested in the characters? You had ambitions for them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Gordon oh, was yes, stuck up in much. space. Mm. He, he couldn't move, really. Gordon was just oh, circling Gordon. around. Yeah. So he didn't have an opportunity to take over any other craft. And um, Parker was... He had the roller and nothing else. <laughs> I think if they made it now, we could have a little more action with Tintin and Alan. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like Captain America, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, there is... The, the, uh, the, maybe you'll shoot me down on this. But there was a story that they used to hang up Alan on one side of the studio at night and Tintin at Tintin at the other. And they get up in the next morning and Alan would be over there. <laughs> <laughs> we never found out who did it, Mary. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> We've got another one down here. Where's the um, over there? <coughs> here he comes. Uh, Viennia, do you remember the reason why Virgil, uh, uh, David Holliday, couldn't continue his role as Virgil in the second scenes of the Thunderbirds and why Ray Barrett couldn't Ray take Barrett, part in Ray Thunderbird Barrett. 6? Jeremy, Jeremy Wilkin took over. Yes, I know. Why? Because uh, David had better things to do. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he went to Broadway to appear in Man of La Mancha. That's a pity. Yeah. Yes. And so what about Ray Barrett? Why couldn't he take why part? Ray in Barrett? Yes, why couldn't he take part in Thunderbird 6? Oh. What? Ooh. Ray Baird went back to Australia, didn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, what did he? Why? Well, there was no ISDN. Well, lines he was going to get taxed over here and he wanted to get off fast. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, you can do nice. voices down the line from anywhere in the world, but I guess if he had gone abroad, that was yeah. pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. In those days. Thanks. Okay. That's all I can tell you. Anybody else? Liam, I'm going to get you running around again. In fact, do that one while you're there and then we'll go to you, sir. Um, uh, I was just wondering. Um, uh, other than the characters you portrayed or helped move machinery and stuff, or directed, um, 
other than those characters that you are particularly probably fond of, who was your favourite characters? Uh, which character? characters were your favourite other than your own? <coughs> Ned Cook. <laughs> I love Ned Cook. Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, yes. Oh, yes. Mm, true. yes um, Terror in New York. <laughs> I remember that one, you see. Yes, yes. Hello, everybody. Ned Cook here. <laughs> yes. And the question was, which characters did you really like, apart from your, apart obviously, all. your own? Well, I just like the whole, <coughs> uh, you know, I couldn't choose any, but I just like the whole setup. I mean, mm. you know, we were a team, and I think we were part of a, a, an overall creative team, mm. and I loved, uh, I loved the whole lot. Mm. You know, I loved all the characters I did from the word go, you know. Okay, Shane? Ah, I must have been asleep through a lot of this, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just say you like Parker. Oh, what? I love Parker. Yeah. Everyone, Everyone loves Parker. Parker. He got yeah. into the most extraordinary adventure. That I think the one who would have been uh, really uh, mentioned here would have been Ray Barrett yeah. playing the Duchess. Oh, that was lovely. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. they tried to get Christine Finn to do it, and she couldn't do it, and... Uh, and uh, there, there was just no way anybody, anybody else. And suddenly Ray Barrett said, I think I can do it. I can't do the voice. <laughs> and he did it. I mean, I, I don't think I've, I've ever laughed so much. No, he was brilliant. It was brilliant as the, the Duchess. But <laughs> not In the casino, 17 black. Yes, yes. that's right. <laughs> best. It had the whole wobble in it. Yes. Yeah, it was very good. Now, there's one at the back there, Liam. If you can... Liam, could you also fetch that jacket? <coughs> I've, got to show, I've got to show folks this. This is hilarious. <coughs> She's getting thinner and thinner, that boy. Yeah. Well, you get... <laughs> That's my son. It's your son. <laughs> yeah. Hiya. Um, There's a question for Shane. Um, you've been in Thunderbirds, which has obviously been around for 50 years now, but you've also been in Bond, which is also 50 years. Yeah. Um, have you any good memories of Roger Moore or any of the other Bond films you were in? <laughs> mm. What, that I can tell the public? <laughs> <laughs> I think Roger was the most delightful co-actor I ever worked with. He genuinely felt that he was about the luckiest guy in the world. He was doing something he really loved to do. He was in the sort of company he loved to be in. Uh, the only trouble with Roger was he tried to break you up at least five times during the day. Uh, it, was, it was his delight to be successful in making you he didn't have to work very hard with me. I just took one look at him and I blew up. It was <laughs> terrible. It was terrible. Well, this, but I tell you what, there was quite a difference. Because uh, I worked with Connery and then later with, with Roger Moore. Connery was a tremendously talented presence. He, I remember coming out of a lift the first time I had a scene with him. Uh, I'd only seen him in bits, pieces before, but all of a sudden he looked like King Kong. I don't mean it, you know, as a character, <laughs> but he was big. He had a presence that not many actors acquired during the course of their uh, careers. Roger really didn't care what happened. I mean, he had that great face. He had a beautiful voice, and uh, and a wicked sense of humor. And a wicked of sense of humor, and he just charmed his way through his career. He, and w which is not uh, saying he, he was without talent. He had an immense mm. amount of talent. But he made that floor work. Mm. A, a leading actor can either make things a bit miserable and tight, and everybody forgets their lines and forgets where they're supposed to be walking to. Roger just sort of paved the way. Every time he was on that floor, mm. he made it easy. Mm. Because all of a sudden, you had a group of actors who were striving for something. Yeah. And they wanted to make it good. And all the, all the tension and all the uh, pretending went out of it. Mm. I mean, characters all of a sudden become real people. And it's because of this, this generosity that, 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 uh, that he had. He was an immense, uh, he, he, to, to me, he was just a, an extraordinary talent in a lot of ways. Well, I, worked, I did work with Roger Moore, but for four, he, he, he got the Bond part. And he did a series called The Saint, and I happened to play in one of the episodes. And we used to eat in the restaurant at, I think it was Elstree, mm. and the sort of the executives were up on a dais, you know, apart from the Hoi Polloi. And he walked into the restaurant, Roger, 
and he looked, he took one look at the director sitting up on the desk, and he fell on his knees, and he, he, he went on his knees all the way to the desk. <laughs> and I thought that was typical of the man, because he knew he was the star. Yeah, you know? he's sending up the buses. And they laughed, they laughed a lot. <laughs> he was great to work with. Yeah, he was. I never worked with him. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, he never worked with you. I know. <laughs> Well, I mean, they warned. They warned him about difficult, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Difficult, yes. Difficult working with him. Yeah. Um, we're here today, obviously, to celebrate lots and lots of different pieces by Jerry and uh, Sylvia and that. But um, the, I, I managed to get hold of this. This is a prototype. Thought I'd bring it along today for the Thunderbirds uh, fans to see. And uh, it was a prototype. There's only three of these made, and I thought it didn't look too bad. You know, it was a bomber jacket. It was about 20 years ago. Um, not too bad, until I looked on the back, and I thought you might find this quite amusing. <laughs> show, show me. It's, it's not particularly good likeness. I think it's meant to be Virgil. But, but no, 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 it's him. <laughs> it's Scott. It's to be Scott. But he's got Thunderbird 2 on his head. Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> but uh, anyway. It's Scott. But it's got that. But Jerry, you know, Jerry turned this one down apparently. So that's Did why the, there was only three of them made. But uh, again, and you've if anyone, got, if and anyone you've wants got. to come and have a word with me afterwards, if they've got <laughs> deep pockets, um, we're here to celebrate Jerry. I'd just like uh, if any of you would like go down the line and just uh, reflect upon Jerry Anderson. Well, we've got to finish the panel in a minute. Um, any particular memories, a personal memory, Mary, <laughs> about Jerry? I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, I really had more to do with Sylvia than, than Jerry uh -huh. because she was uh, um, doing a characterization of the of the puppets. So I w didn't really have that much to do with, with Jerry himself. Okay. All right. David. Down the, no, well, Dave, the other David down there. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's quite all right. Oh, no, um, they're starting. It's <laughs> beauty. My, my memories of Jerry would go back to the really early days when he was a dubbing editor and I, I was his assistant. Yeah. And the fun that we used to have, especially down the pub. <laughs> <laughs> but I know he was very much at home in the editing <laughs> room. That's, that's where it all began. That's where yeah. it all began. And yeah. Judith, any particular memories to do with Jerry? I can remember we were making, we were doing the uh, title scenes for Stingray. And it's the very beginning shots where they zoom into um, cat the um, Commander Shaw. Commander Shaw, yeah. yes. And so they had to get this special zoom in, and they got it in on a Friday evening, and we had to work and do it. And it was me, Mary was up t up top, and um, ha we had to wire the his wheelchair. And um, then pull it, and they, I was pulling it, and they were zooming, so the zoom didn't work. The string broke, and um, 25 takes later, <laughs> Jerry wasn't a happy bunny. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it. <laughs> you served him very well, definitely. Uh, David Graham. Well, I'm. You probably may have heard this story. I first met Jerry on a TV film. And and um, it was my lucky day because, you know, you have to have, to survive in this business, great pieces of luck. And when we got talking between takes, you know, and Jerry told me that he was hoping to make animation series, I said, well, I'm not bad on voices. And true to his word, uh, I did in. five series, and I remember him saying to Arthur Provis at the time, when I was sort of around, I've got total faith in David, and I've got his book, which <laughs> is about me, and, he, and there's a beautiful dedication of what I contributed, and that's a treasured possession. And You know, he did a hell of a lot for me. He, mm. he, he almost enabled me to stay the course, yeah. you know, because I was able to sustain myself while waiting for other acting visual work yeah. on, the, on the work I did for Jerry. Lovely. Mm. Shane, any personal <coughs> memories about Jerry? I think I became aware more and more of Jerry's sort of perception about 
actors' voices. Mm. Uh, and so I began to look at this and see, and there was no actor's performance that I ever saw where the sound of the actor's voice typified the, the, the person he was playing. Mm. He, he somehow had this incredible sort of uh, perception, I can't think of another word, and it, it's very comforting to have an audience listen to a voice and actually believe that that character is speaking it and speaking it genuinely. Mm. Because sometimes you have to work a hell of a lot to, to, to do this. He seemed to be able to put his finger on the kind of a voice that would express what he wanted to hear and what the audience wanted to hear. It was quite I think he's going to was assembling a good team, yeah. yeah. And Matt? Uh, most of my time was spent with more with Sylvia. Uh -huh. Uh, <laughs> then was Jerry. Um, I, when I first met Jerry, I have to. Be, I, I hadn't met him at the beginning at all. I met him through uh, Sylvia hired me. Um, he scared the shit out of me. <laughs> what Much, was I was that? very. I don't know. He was very tall, hmm. and I, I have this impression he always had a cigar, but I don't know whether he did or not. Sometimes I, I think he did. Yes. I think he was emulating Lou. Yes, I have, I have this impression. I can see him be in the control room with the hmm. cigar, and we, be, we we had three mics and Slough that we used to work, and we'd be working on a script, and I could see him in that thing. And if, if he suddenly went down and we said something, mm. that's it, I'm fired, that's it. You, you know, knew he was the he, boss. He scared me. But then we had a lunch one time, and we, they used to do, remember they used to do salad and stuff out on the, on the outside? And we were sitting there talking, and he told this joke. And um, that changed it with me. I, from then on, he was fine. He was fine. Yeah. And uh, I, I just thought he was a man ahead of his time as far as everything. When you think some of the things we're using today, yeah. they were, he was prophesying in Thunderbirds, you know, the, the phone, the, the everything. Well, oh, we have to wrap it up now. I'm going to say it was an extraordinary piece of work, which many people still love today. Future audiences a new generation is going to discover a new version of Thunderbirds next year. But for now, for the original lineup for Thunderbirds, please thank all our guests. <laughs> yes, indeed.